everyone. Today is International Women's Day, and here at Energy Monitor, we're talking to women leaders in the energy sector. My name is Dave Keating. I'm the senior writer for Energy Monitor, and today I'm going to be talking to Elizabeth Benedict Christensen, who is lead specialist for global talent management at the Danish wind company Vestas. Elizabeth, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dave. Now, just before this interview, we established that actually the two of us went to high school together in a very small town in Connecticut. So it is an amazing coincidence, really. Uh, we were theorizing that maybe growing up in a small town made us both want to travel the world and live all over. And here we are both in Europe on the other side of the world from where we came from. Um, and maybe we could start there, Elizabeth. I could ask you, what has been your career path? Uh, and how is it that you ended up in the wind industry? Yeah, definitely a great question. I think first and foremost, my career path has been nonlinear. And I think that for anyone listening, wanting to get into wind who's not here yet, that to really think about how do I get there with kind of the step change or lateral move. And every opportunity or experience can lead to and kind of upskill you for the next. Going back to that childhood in Connecticut, I will definitely say that I was really interested in the environment, culture, and people. And that's really formulated everything that I've done personally and professionally, as well as academically. And um, it's why I chose to go to Europe uh, back in high school to explore. It's why I chose to take a humanities and a social science degree and pursue a PhD where I explicitly looked at everyday sense of belonging and experiences of diversity and inclusion. Um, and have been a researcher or a consultant within sustainability, uh, human rights, international development, and now ultimately wind energy. And, and this for me is it's all about purpose. It's all about sustainability. And there it's, you know, sustainability is about doing and making smart choices today for a better tomorrow. And I think that the red thread through my career and my experiences have always been that passion and that purpose to, to make the world a better place. And that's why I have ended up in WINS and I've been here for almost four years now. Yeah, it's a similar story I hear from a lot of people working in both wind and solar that this passion to really make a difference is what really motivated them. And also the fact that, you know, these new technologies hold so much promise to actually change the world. So, you know, you move from the area of just talking about change to actually affecting change. Um, now it is International Women's Day. So I wanted to ask you, I mean, energy, we know has been a traditionally male dominated field. Uh, what do you think the usual experiences for women today in the wind sector? Uh, is it the kind of the same across the board or does it vary by country? The short answer is definitely not. And, and definitely it varies by country. And I think it's a really interesting question to ask what the usual experience of, of women in wind is because we don't go and ask what is the usual experience of men in energy or any particular industry or sector or company. And so just as there's no usual or typical experience of men in any industry, there's definitely no typical experience of a woman in wind. And I think when we talk about the experiences of both men and women, we really need to consider the richness of diversity. It's not just gender or gender identity, but really all of those di diversity dimensions that shape our experiences, that shape our worldview, and are really what we bring to work every day. Is it important to have that kind of diversity in a team, in particularly in the wind sector? Absolutely. So first and foremost, I think diversity is important, no matter the company, the industry, the markets, the country. And I think it's really critical to innovation, to research, development, to making a stronger company. And the business case for diversity has been made many times, um, and people don't really argue for that. But absolutely, we need diversity of experiences um, and these life experiences and age. So again, it's not just gender or gender diversity. What academic background do you have? We need people working in communication, research, IT, tech, finance, legal, compliance, human resources, and all of those functions are very diverse in their academic experiences, in their projects, in their roles. And when we look at a, a company as a whole, we don't really tend to argue why we need finance or why we need compliance or why we need sales. We need all of those functions. So just as we need all of those functions, 
we need a diversity of experiences and perspectives to make our company even stronger. And companies can absolutely achieve success without diversity, but I would say without increased diversity, that success can be limited. We need people who are the risk takers, who are the innovators, who are the creative thinkers. We also need the analytics and the skeptics to say, hold on a second, have we considered X, Y, and Z so that we make data-driven choices? We need people to go out and sell and influence those ideas and those products and services. So we need everything. Elizabeth, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Some really interesting insights uh, into the wind sector there. And thank you at home for watching. Take care. Thank you, Dave.